Folks, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is uh, probably going to break up. I don't know if I'll last, but I'll, I will try. Um, uh, we're going to talk about multilingual today and uh, what we've been working on uh, for some solutions with native managing uh, native multilingual, uh, and I'll, I'll discuss why that's problematic in Joomla 2.5. Uh, but basically, um, we have two concepts that the title suggested there. One is internationalization, which is making your website work everywhere, where everyone views it. And then we have localization, which is more like making it work right where you live. This is kind of a small place where I'm from. Um, but both of these solutions, if you're either making, uh, uh, working on internationalization for your web projects or localization for a specific language or culture, for example, you need generally, or often you need a, a separate language. And multi-language in uh, Joomla has often <coughs> relied on, uh, in the past, prior to Joomla 2.5, relied on third-party uh, solutions. And I'm just going to quickly compare the third-party uh, translation to, to native translation in 2.5. Uh, so we started just at the top there with um, the, the, the version supported, third-party options for 1.0.1.5 and 2.5, and then native for 2.5 and above. So I'm, not, I'm just kind of just ignoring the fact that 1.6 and 1.7 <coughs> exist. I hope you do that too. Uh, so basically, there's a number of features that you end up coming uh, in, to grips with when you uh, translate a site. Uh, first, you have to associate source language items with uh, the target translations. And keeping those straight, um, for example, in a third-party solution, uh, such as Joomfish or uh, Fay Language, I think is the new one, uh, that's very easy to do. So for example, you're on a web page. <coughs> you change the language from English to French. It's still in English because the source language is English, for example, and you edit the article and you write the French translation, and you save it and you're done. So it's very easy in a third-party solution to keep track of which article is associated with the same article in another language. In Joomla 2.5 native, that's very, very difficult. So there's no actual built-in way for you to connect and associate all the things you need to translate in all the languages. I'll give you a quick example in a few minutes. You also um, might want a dedicated translation interface, and third-party solutions provide that, where you see all your translations and you can filter for language or keyword or content type, for example. Again, third-party solutions handle that really well. Native, there's no dedicated interface at all. You just see your articles. And you can filter by language, uh, but again, because you haven't necessarily associated them, especially in very uh, different languages or, or two languages where you only know one, it, it's very problematic. Translators also often like to see the original content that they have to translate. Of course, uh, um, they have to see it, but they see it side by side with their uh, editor where they're making the translation. That's very convenient. Third party solutions handle that well. Uh, the native interface does not. So you can imagine creating a new article uh, based on an, uh, an article you already have in the Joomla backend, and you, it's just the Joomla content editor. So there's no, other, there's no way for you to look at the other translation unless you have another screen open on another monitor or a, a paper pasted to the side of, of your screen or something. So native does not handle that very well. Ease of setup uh, is another issue for the third-party translations. Mostly it's pretty good. You have your languages installed, you install your third-party, and you essentially maybe make a few configuration tweaks, and you start translating. Native is not like that at all. You have to do a number of um, kind of painful, tedious tasks to get your site ready for multilingual. And, and even with the, the solution that I want to talk to you about uh, that we have out called Jacetta, you still have to go through that step of making your site ready for multilingual. And we actually have some documentation on that on our website, uh, and I can happily share that with you. Uh, third-party adoption in terms of translating other extensions. Um, the third-party systems make that very easy. You write a simple XML file. 
Third-party adoption in the native systems really has to do more with an extension developer using or making their extension available to the native multilingual features in Joomla 2.5. And some of, most of the newer extensions that's just built in if they, if they build to the API, Joomla API. Older extensions may suffer a little if they're using kind of some deprecated uh, setups because their code is quite old. Um, so they may actually have to do some additional modifications. So but both are kind of equivalent. There's a, there's a reasonable number of third-party adoptions and certainly all the major popular extensions would have that. A computer assisted translation, that's where you have a, a target language and you can use a, a translation service like Microsoft Bing. Um, I don't actually use Google Translate in this example because if uh, their API is not free. Um, so I'll, I'll mention the Microsoft one a number of times, not because I'm enamored <laughs> with Microsoft, but it is, they give you a, a quite a bit of translation for free uh, when you want to use their API. So third party options. Um, that doesn't normally ship native to my recollection. I have a couple of multilingual sites, uh, but you can get plugins that allow a bunch of, say, automated translations to be pulled uh, from online services, and then you can tweak them as needed. So there is some computer assisted translation for third party. For native, that does not exist at all. Forward compatible with Joomla 3 and beyond. Okay, uh, For third-party solutions, it's not clear until a developer makes it compatible, so you're waiting. For native translation, because they're just native articles, if Joomla decides to continue to provide upgrade paths, your content will all be upgraded. Your translated content is not in a proprietary format, so if you just migrate your content using the Joomla infrastructure, you're going to migrate your translated content also. Okay, So that's actually an advantage of the, of the native uh, multilingual system. Uh, also, the extension-free translation display. So that sounds a little bit complicated, uh, but basically this is what I mean. Uh, if you use a third-party tool to translate your content, you also need to use that tool to display that translated content to your end users. Okay, so it's like you have that extension running when you load your page, even if it's, well, for all your languages. For the native version, it's just native content, and all you've done is given it a language flag. So you don't you know, need any third-party extension, of course, to, to display native multilingual. Uh, completion monitoring, uh, I don't think that exists. Um, I've not discovered it anyway in my, in, in my use of third-party solutions. And that's basically how much of the French translation on this website is complete, what is, how much is left, um, how can I get somebody to easily find that what's untranslated and get it translated so my site is fully uh, localized or internationalized, for example. And in the native, uh, actually, maybe, maybe you guys could comment, Alex, is, is there much completion monitoring in the third-party tools? You do. Okay, good. What's that? You're right. So there is some, but in the in the native, the point is that there's absolutely no idea of how much you have translated or how much needs to be translated, especially because you don't even know sometimes which articles are associated in the different languages. So it, it, that problem keeps coming back in numerous aspects of, of multilingual uh, and collaborative translation too. Um, basically, uh, in um, most of the cases, because of the interfaces, it's difficult to have teams of translators work, uh, especially those translators are not Joomla experts already or uh, at least skilled Joomla users. So uh, our idea was basically to take um, the good points that we see on both these slides here, um, the uh, associating the target items uh, and the uh, source languages, dedicated translation interface, um, showing the original content, um, computer-assisted translation, forward compatibility, and uh, for fewer database queries, I didn't mention that. The, the native system um, uses fewer database queries to, to display your translation, so you get a, a performance improvement. So we wanted to make a tool that had uh, all those features, the best of both worlds, I guess you'd say, for Joomla 2.5 and beyond. Okay? Uh, and so it kind of comes down to an idea of uh, workflow versus performance. So I, I think the third-party solutions had a very great workflow. And the native solutions have better performance. And we want both those. We should be able to get both of those is, is, is a kind of our point. <clears throat> so in Joomla 2.5, the problem with the workflow, so, so let, me, let me back up just a tiny bit. The performance, if you have a native multilingual system, is higher. Let's just start there. But the workflow for Joomla 2.5, the native multilingual system, is very tedious. And I kind of alluded to it. You have to duplicate ad nauseum categories, not sections anymore, right? So, but lots of categories. You have to duplicate them and translate them. Menu items, duplicate them and translate them. Articles, web links, whatever kind of content you have, you have to, you're cons constantly duplicating manually these items. 
selecting the language that you want to translate them into and then manually trying to keep them all. You know, people are actually keeping spreadsheets in Excel or whatever they're using to say which title, article title in this language, let's say French, meets up with this English language. And they have to do that for every piece of content on their site. It's extremely tedious and painful. And you have to track all that stuff. So, okay, you're tracking, as I said, what article belongs to what. And what if you make a change? Okay, so I think the next slide has an example here. Right, so I've, this is the same, I just pulled this out of Google Translate. I, I said I wouldn't say that, I, I lied, I guess. So I just translated this title into Chinese or Mandarin or something. Okay, so if I'm a site administrator and I don't know anything about the second language, if English is my source language, say I make a change in that first article and I have 100 articles. How do I propagate that change to, I mean, which article do I even pick to propagate that change? It's very, very problematic in native. The workflow is awful. Okay? And so anything, we've been saying basically anything beyond two languages or five pages of content really is, it's kind of not worth your time. Okay, it's very tough. Okay? So uh, Yannick uh, and uh, our uh, other colleagues at Diffubox in, uh, in France uh, came up with uh, Josetta, which is a, basically a native trans, uh, it's a translation manager for native multilingual in Joomla 2.5. So dedicated interface was an important aspect. So this is the Josetta interface. When you install and use Josetta, you basically create a, a, a menu item to the translation interface. And when you want to translate, you just click it and it takes you out of the Joomla environment. It's not out of the Joomla environment, but it takes you out of your template, for example, on the front end and gives you just a translation interface. Okay? So obviously in this case we have articles listed. You can see, uh, you can select the article type. I'm not getting a cursor there. You can see the item type is Joomla articles and these are your articles that we've translated. The available languages are on the top and you can see we can translate one of these articles to either Italian or Swedish or whatever we have installed. You can check, you can change this, of course, and bring it down and look at any of the item types you have that are compatible. So currently all the core Joomla content is going to come up in your translation interface. Just that it's pluggable, though, uh, and there is a uh, working and very basic K2 uh, plugin that actually, so we, we wrote it as a demo for how, how to make plugins, but Fotos has expanded on that, and he was hoping it would be ready today. I didn't hear from him, so uh, it's very close, the, the K2 uh, plugin for the translation items. Um, you also want to see the, or I, didn't, well, I want to point out something else, I'll come back to it. You also want to see the original content while you're translating. So here is actually the translation editor. When you selected one of those articles, for example, and hit translate to, what are we, we're translating this article to French, okay? So there's a number of things that you can look at here. Oh, sorry. Um, when you see some completion monitoring up here, you can say it's, this translation is published or not, and you can just simply select it's 25, 50, 75, or 100% translated. So it's not actually counting how much you've translated or somehow calculating it. As the translator, you say, oh, I'm, I'm a half done, for example, okay? And then you can see the source languages here. You can copy them and then start translating if that's your preference. So I'm just going to slide down on the screenshot. I, I don't do live demos. They always fail, so these are all screenshots. So just feeling a little clunky. But if you scroll down and look at the main content here again, this is the source content. I just use that copy button to bring it over into the editor. Now, if you talk to translators, uh, this is really great for them because they don't have to, for example, take these list items and re-specify that it's a list. Right? They don't have to type it out manually and say, oh, that's a list. They can just now start translating each of those points. They don't have to take this link find out what the link was in the source and recreate the link using the editor. Okay? So all those things are just copied over because the source is over. Yeah, Matthew. Uh, so what No, no. So what basically what happened is is when you are in your translation manager, you say, "Okay, I want to translate this article." You click it. And when you do it, it makes that association for you. That's what it does. It creates a new article in the, in the language you specified and links them together. That's the point of Josetta, really, because Joomla does that. It doesn't do that. It makes it very difficult for you to do that. Okay? And if your question was about whether that link is to an existing article, obviously Josetta is not going to automatically update the link for you. So if it's to an outside, if it's an external link, Then 
Sorry, that's a good question. You're actually talking about the link in the content. Yeah, so right. So in that, if that link has to be changed because it's going to a different language, then you have to do that the way you normally would. What's that? Yeah, if you have text in your images, you'd have to do that. That's right. If you want to keep it or whether or not you want to change it. I'm thinking of using it to do Joomla documentation. And it would be appropriate if you showed a screen in the admin interface for that admin interface to be in the French version of Joomla if you were doing a French documentation page. Sure, but you can. I mean, yes, it's, it's just yeah. a regular article. It's just obviously that it's not done on an IP because we cannot match you know, images. Right, and, and, and there's no. Yeah, the, re the real issue is that. But there's no standardized way for using languages, images in different languages. If Joomla provided that, we could tap into it, but they don't. So then you have to do that as a translator. Back to the view of all the articles. We've got a common name under a translation. I think it's one back. I'm going to come back to that. I have a couple slides coming up. Uh, well, let's get there, because I'm going to talk about that specifically, but uh, then we can address it. Um, and, and that's the guy you have to convince anyway. Um, right, so you got your original translation, um, and uh, there's also the completion monitoring I mentioned, uh, and I, here I, I thought I had a slide for it earlier, I guess I left it till the end. So here you just kind of specify, and we could make that more, um, you know, detailed if we wanted, but uh, right now probably this is sufficient for most cases. Uh, and here's when you mouse over, and this is your exact point, when you mouse over how many translations there are for this article, it gives you this pop-up that says, oh, there's a 75% translated Italian version, 100% um, Swedish, 25% uh, Dutch, but it's unpublished, and the French one we just started. So if you don't select a completion, it says, oh, we just started translating it. Okay? So the issue with flags is if you have, if you're actually making a truly international site and you have 300 languages, <coughs> you're going to have a lot of flags for every one of these. So that was the design idea there to not use flags. <laughs> you will have a long you'll have a long tooltip, but hopefully it doesn't break your layout. <laughs> So also keep in mind that in terms of interface, uh, ACL is built into the language system. So you can actually give some users who are going to be the French translators, for example, <clears throat> they might come to the screen and they're only going to have one option to translate to French. Flags become irrelevant if you have uh, translators who are just doing one language. So we tried to build to the you know, 80 or 90 percent use case. So if you have a translation team, you're probably going to have one person on each team for that language. And when they go in, they're only going to have one language to translate. So really it just becomes whether or not they have a one here or a zero. Yeah, right. Right. So remember, our also our expectation also, uh, or our hope would be that your translators, in most cases, are not going to be Joomla users. I mean, we kind of expect to see this because we're used to the Joomla admin backend. This is a front-end interface only. You do not, this is, there's nothing in the backend except configuration parameters, some import options that I'll get to. So, you know, we're also you know, keeping it simple for that reason. You know, they may not be, even be web professionals. Right. We have some uh, basic filters here where you can either show all the items like I have or just show ones that are incomplete. So this kind of goes back to our completion monitoring. 
or only ones that are completed. Um, I'm kind of wondering why I would want to see which ones are just completed or not, but as a, as a, as a translator, I'm going to probably want to be working with only that are incomplete. Uh, oh, an update, right, sure, right. And of course, there's a word filter you can search by that, or select a, in the, in, depending on the content you're using, you can select a category to narrow down uh, the display. We've also built in machine assistance, and it goes right in. And I mentioned that we're using the Microsoft Translator. There's a bit.ly link here. It's actually very difficult to find. Um, Microsoft is so big, it's hard to just find this page, which is on the um, Microsoft Marketplace. And uh, down here, you see $160 a month for 16 million characters. If you keep scrolling, it says 2 million characters a month free. You still have to sign in and whatever, but uh, for most translators, or for most systems probably, or e small sites, that's going to be sufficient at least to get you started. If you're translating like big UN sites, for example, you may have to consider buying something like this. We've only built in support for Microsoft Translator, but we, it's pluggable. You can build your own for Google Translator, or we may do that eventually, uh, depending on demand. Okay, so you need, a, you need an account, you need to purchase, uh, and basically make an application in their Microsoft Translator, and then you put the, the, the keys in the Josetta configuration, and when you do that, you get another button by the copy that says Suggest. So it takes this code, again, you see it's formatted, but now, this is, a, I think, a French translation, it looks, yeah, it looks that way, um, but now it's done most of the translating, it keeps the formatting, and that is a really big deal. Uh, I've done lots of translations where uh, I actually have a, a translator, uh, I just send them the copy, they send me the copy back. And it's quite painful to have to go in and reformat everything. Um, and, and that can be particularly tricky in certain content types. So we also found that the machine translations are quite good. And translators prefer to start with a machine, uh, many do, prefer to start with a machine-assisted translation and just do the editing. And they're saving up to 50% of their time. A, they don't have to type as much. And B, they're just, they're just checking the, the translation quality. Okay? So we built that in. And this will auto-detect the language you're translating in. Ping the, API, ping the Microsoft Translator API and give you back, obviously, the, the correct translation. You see there's no translation option here. You can't suggest Italian. Whatever you select it to translate into, we automatically detect that and, and you go forward. So we think that's a really good workflow improvement uh, in addition to the other things. What about text formatting? Does it tag them with that or when using this? So it brings, uh, I think what it does is it strips out the, H it translates between the HTML tags. Is that right? Right. So you're formatting like. Our, our tests show pretty good, pretty good res, um. And remember, we're doing. They don't translate what? The links. The links, right? Not the links. So remember, a translator is expecting to have to make changes to the content. You know, right? That's their job or, you know, or their volunteer work, but they know that that's a task they have to do. So we don't expect it to be perfect, but we've tried to minimize those tedious, certainly the tedious tasks that Joomla requires for multilingual, but even just the tedious tasks that you would have as a translator. So uh, just a few final slides at the end. K2 support that I mentioned um, is you can actually do a basic K2 right now. Um, you just download a plugin from our developer area. Uh, I have a link on the next slide, I think. Um, and you can use that for the basic. What K2 is doing is building in support for custom fields and their images that get attached so that you'll be able to translate those things in the translation manager and select, you know, all those items. You know, there's a point I didn't make, and this is actually a critical point. When you go into the editor, <coughs> you can see that there's, it doesn't look like a Joomla content editor at all. Um, and we stripped out lots of things. There's no meta tag options. Oh, actually, there is meta information. But there's many, many, many things that we've decided that, we, that are not, trans, they're not appropriate for translation. OK? Um, and so we're not asking them to translate. And that simplifies the issue for them. One thing for extension developers who want to build plugins, and we would love you guys to do that, <laughs> extension developers in the room, um, is that you have to choose for your content types what items are appropriate for translation. And we know that you know your extension best, and you, it's up to you to pick them. And in something like K2, not only do you have to figure that out, but they have to provide support for the custom fields that their users are generating. So that's in progress. So they're still going to. Oh, you can't? No. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so they would. They, So 
So, so there'll, there'll be the next steps are probably workflows, improvements, like notifications. So I mean, they're sort of the right moment to talk about that. Because yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's not really done. Because this whole bit about notifications. So just to be. I just want to keep it so simple that for the most common use case, you don't have to translators don't have to worry about anything. So just just to be clear, Yannick, the ACL supported for the languages, but not for the content. So far. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Two questions. Um, one is how are you going about translating complex J form elements in menu items? Uh, that's a good question. So in in the I've not tried that as as, as maybe you can speak to that. This is the same thing. It's all described in the menu items. Show the original and the translation. Yeah, and maybe the edits and elements. I mean, you can handle JavaScript navigation. Yeah, number two. Second, qu second yeah. question um, was, say you're looking at an article which is 15th in the second page of a list of articles, three menu items down, and you now want to see the French version and you're the English version. Yeah. What does your language switcher do? Does it take you back to the home? It's not our language switcher. It's the Joomla language switcher. So it takes you back to the home page. Oh. Yeah, that's, yes, it, it will most of the time unless you have set up you know, it's okay, basically it's just to uh, display so yeah. far. So there's no so if you set up in the UI set applications, then it will match both and the flags basically it comes down to the flags. The flags will go to the right page. And because of I am able to track associations, uh, that's one of the next things I'll be doing is just match uh, articles in particular in the world. Yeah. Because it's not that hard. It will come. Did I answer your questions? It goes directly from page to page for us. With if you made a menu item associations. Yes. Right. Yeah. But you know, here, because we track associations, uh, it can be done. Mm -hmm. And I didn't mention, actually, that when you're translating an article, or let's say a menu, a menu item, item right. to another language, yeah. the association is created, created on the other yeah. yes. Right. So if those associations are created and the, tr the translations exist, it's a smooth. Matthew, please ask.
There's many different conceptions of what a multilingual site means, and that's one one version of it, and that's what's been implemented. So that's what. Yes. Yeah, so and, and our goals and our goal is not to change that. <laughs> right, so if you built the, I mean, you still have to set your site up the way a normal multilingual site is set up for Joomla 2.5, and I'm not going to go into that. That's right, that's right. Well, we deal with it very clearly in the documentation, but so, so, and I did mention it, but I guess I can say again, you have to set up the site. When I, when I come back to the bullets, I'll, I'll, I'll hit that point again, okay? Um, I just have a couple of slides. Uh, we built the Joomfish uh, migrator, also for Joomla 1.5, um, and this is available now, and you basically install it on your Joomla 1.5 site, and it will uh, export your data, and it will try to get your links. So in this case, I'm exporting you know, 80 articles of 110, and it processes your articles, and it basically will give you an exported file of all your um, articles, categories, and sections, and menus, menu items. So that's the only content that it, that it will handle. So if you're migrating to Joomla 2.5, um, there's a couple ways to go. If you're using JUpgrade, of course, it takes your English content out, and it's just going to build your site. In this case, you'd say, probably just start with a fresh site with nothing in there, don't use JUpgrade, and then just export with our 1.5 exporter, import that into your Joomla 2.5 site. So this is the export from 1.5. The export completes, you can purge the temporary files, and it prompts you to save. You take that file, you go to your Joomla 2.5, and you just import um, in the Joomla, uh, just set a back end, there's just an import option, and you um, import your files. Yeah. Yeah, right. Uh, that's a good question. Um, what do you think? <laughs> so right now the answer is no. It, it, it could it could change, but right now it's no. <laughs> um, so to come back to our over, overview slide, then uh, we discussed the third party and native. For the native plus Josetta, then we still get the benefits of our associating uh, our target and source uh, languages. That's ex that's probably the most important thing that it does, including menu items and categories and all your other content. Gives you a really uh, simplified translation interface on the front end, um, and it shows you uh, the original uh, during setup. Third party adoption right now is low, K2 is about it. Um, so we're hoping, and please contact me if you have an extension you want to help. Uh, ease of setup, it's, it's easy to set up Josetta. You still have to do a few little things uh, in the back end, but it's much easier than setting up if you have like, uh, you know, 100 categories and 1,000 articles. Setting up translation for native without Josetta is very, very, very difficult. Um, and it's, it's much, much simpler with, with Josetta. Uh, and then this page, I think, is, is really impressive. We've got really good computer-assisted translation. Because you're just creating Joomla content, it's forward compatible forever. You, you future-proof your content. Um, you don't add any bloat when you're displaying your content because it's, you know, it's just the Joomla content. And as a matter of fact, once you finish, if you have a static site and the translation is complete, you can delete Josetta from your system. You do not need it again. Okay, it's completely not required for display of our articles at all. So that gives us some performance improvement, uh, some, at least at this stage, uh, some initial completion monitoring. <clears throat> and I th we think that the translation interface is really great for collaboration, a, a collaborative translation, especially for non Joomla experts or non, non web experts. Um, oh, yeah, we, so we have a link uh, to how to make a Josetta plugin for those of you who want one. Um, uh, you can download this for free, of course. There's a link up here, and you can just see, you can get the K2 examples in the documentation, and, you know, fill your boots, let us know, and we'd love to help and, uh, and give you some promotion for your, for your efforts. And I think that's it. Thank you.